and without further ado, I want to introduce Alex P. Gates. Where'd he go? There. Right there. Uh, he works at PAC, which is a startup that is a social networking site for dogs. My two dogs are on there. You should definitely check it out. It's a cool site. Uh, without further ado, Alex. Does this work? Can you hear me? We're good? Okay, yeah, I'm Alex. Uh, I uh, am from Watch here uh, and PAC. I get to work with John Hobbs every day, and it's a pleasure. Um, I've got about five minutes, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, these Philips Hue lights that I picked up for my birthday. Uh, they're really great. So um, what they are, there's LED bulbs that connect to a bridge that connect your wireless router and allow you to do fun things. Um, so uh, it comes in a nice box, of course. Uh, so for the average consumer, there's this iPhone app, and then there's an Android app that lets you set up these different scenes where uh, you, can, um, you can download these scenes from their, from their website or you can create your own scenes by essentially taking a photo and then sampling colors from that photo and then sending them, sending them out to the light bulb. So um, you can have up to 50 of these bulbs per bridge and so you can put them all over your house uh, if you want to. Um, let's see, uh, the bulbs have about a 15,000 hour life uh, and so they say if you use it a few hours a day, that's a good for 15 years. Um, and they're about $200. You can pick it up at the Apple Store. Uh, I think they're going to be on Amazon pretty soon as well. Uh, so, um, the, like I said, the average consumer can use these uh, essentially uh, with, a, with a smartphone. You can turn your lights on and off. You can be uh, at home and do it. You can be away and turn your lights on and off. You can change the colors. You can set up these different scenes. Um, and you can also set up a schedule. Uh, um, for the for the bulbs as well. So if you want them to come on at a certain time uh, and go off at a certain time or whatever, um, when you set up these scenes, of course, it's essentially you know you're dragging and dropping where you want the color to be, and then the light bulbs respond. Um, and then you have these different groups where you can you can put everything bulbs in different groups per uh, fixture or something like that, and you can create all these different groups and set them and play with them all at the same time. Um, so uh, this is an example. Now this is really weird because I think there's something weird with LED and my iPhone camera because it gives you these crazy lines. Uh, but this is an example of one of the scenes uh, that came just you know kind of pre-built pre into the app uh, where uh, this is a, a light fixture that's hanging in my stairwell uh, and it's, it's using these pretty colors. Um, and that's all fun. Uh, you can do some neat stuff with that. Um, but they also released an API and it's a RESTful API. Uh, and that really lets you do some neat stuff. So um, I, uh, I sent, uh, I, I put a little video out that I want to show you quick because it kind of gives you a demo. of One of the first things that I built with this API, um, I posted this on Twitter not too long ago and I think Zach is the one that saw that. Pretty simple, right? Um, but that's just using the, the uh, uh, Chrome text, you know, speech input. Cool. Um, so anyway, uh, that's using the Chrome speech input, and I'm passing it off to a library I found on GitHub that allows you to pass in regular color names uh, to to set these these colors. So, um, like I said, uh, it's got a nice RESTful API, and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So you can uh, you can control lights, or you can control groups with that. And when you do that, you can set, um, you can control the hue, uh, which is the color. You can c control the saturation with it or the brightness of that. So those are the HSL or HSB values that you can send. You can also, also set color temperature as well. So uh, if you've seen some LED bulbs that are sometimes really harshly blue or you know really crisp versus something that's warmer, I mean you can pass a different color temperature range to it as well. Um, so anyway, after I put together that, uh, that little demo with just the voice control stuff, I, I really got to work on something that I thought would be kind of interesting, and that's consuming weather data and then having these lights uh, display based on that weather data. So um, uh, this is an example of uh, just the other day when it just started raining. Uh, uh, that one blue light uh, indicates uh, that it's raining outside. Uh, and how it works is uh, if, if it's really, really bright blue, that means it's raining a lot harder. 
Um, the second light on the other side, I think there's another example here, uh, acts as uh, the forecast uh, bulb. So if there's a greater than 50% chance of rain in the next four hours, that light is going, going to be blue as well. Uh, it'll be uh, brighter the closer you get to the time where it's supposed to rain. Uh, and so uh, what I've done is I've just hooked into the forecast.io API. Um, it's free. You get a thousand calls to that per day. I've got a Mac Pro in the basement that's just sort of always on. Uh, and then I just run a cron job to hit that. And, uh, and it, communicate, it pulls in, parses it, and then sends the right signals uh, to, um, to the lights. Um, let's see. That's really about it. Um, they, the, the API and everything is fairly new. I think they released these uh, to the consumer and then people started hacking them. And they said, well, let's build a real API. Uh, and now we're seeing some cool apps in the App Store that people are making. Uh, uh, the only downside at this point, obviously, is the fact that um, you know, there's, it's, it's not too easy to communicate to your bridge from the outside world if you wanted to. I'm, I, I haven't experimented with punching a hole in my uh, firewall or anything like that to, to hit them. And that's why I'm always using an always-on computer in the, in the basement to run that. Um, but really, there's, there's really no limit to what you could do with these, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, coming up with some new things. I thought it would be interesting to make the, the color of the, the, the bulb, the precipitation bulb, uh, uh, based on what kind of precipitation it is. So maybe green if it's raining, uh, pink if it's sleet, purple or whatever, uh, and the same for the forecast bulb. And then, of course, I'd like to in implement some... Uh, uh, weather, uh, some like severe watches or alerts or warnings or whatever and have it, you can flash them and you can do all sorts of different things. Uh, so I'm going to look to build that out a little bit more, but I've been up and running for this for about a week uh, and it's been pretty fun to see uh, so far. Is this H code anymore? Uh, no, not yet. How many bulbs do you get with the 200? Three. And then, and that includes the bridge? Yes. And so can you buy cheaper bulbs that you don't need a bridge anymore? I think you can, I think the bulbs are like $59 a piece. And you can put you can put them up to fifty in the same bridge. But you know, so they always say they're LED, right? So they'll last forever, or fifteen years, or whatever. So you, get that. Um, you know, and that's their argument. The other, the thing is that oh yeah, it's great, it's LED, and it's low power use, and all that jazz. Until you have like a seven-year-old Mac Pro in your basement that's always on. <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> it's really not. It's defeating the purpose a little bit, but. What's that? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm sure it's available. Uh, I, I read it at one point. I was trying to figure out what that would mean in terms of watts and you know how bright to compare it to a regular light bulb. Uh, three of them in a light fixture is pretty decent. It's not. I mean, it doesn't get as bright as like a, you know if I had three 75 watt bulbs in there, but it it does an all right job. Lightning talk over. Thanks, guys.